makes me want to cry right now. It's not right. I think it was a little over a year ago, uh, Casey and I started talking about trying to find some property that we could work on together and manage together. And uh, I have some friends in Schuyler County, Illinois, that have some really nice property, some family-owned property that uh, they don't hunt. They do a lot of uh, forest management work on and were uh, interested in what management meant as far as wildlife goes and uh, other facets of habitat. So uh, I knew Casey would be a really good guy to, to bring into that. And, take on the project. My initial uh, thought of uh, managing these properties when we first set foot on them and looked at them, I thought, oh my gosh, we've stepped into a gold mine. This place is going to be absolutely phenomenal. We started in August of this year, which was a lot later than both of us would have liked to have started, but not having all summer worth of trail cam picks going into the season, we knew early season we were going to spend some time doing recon. And splits coming to this cornfield, there's a good trail coming through right here coming off that bean field, and it's almost like they're funneling through maybe coming to this cornfield right yeah. here. And then cutting up right on the side of the pond. I decided to join Casey and Chase this year and hunt a little bit up here in Illinois. It's been a learning experience so far. I'm learning a bunch from these guys. A new approach to a lot of the, the traditional ways I've hunted. Uh, at home we're hunting mostly swamps and, and flat land, a little bit of hill land, a lot of pine plantation, a lot of bottomland hardwoods. Upper Midwest, Illinois. It's ag fields and, and draws. Les uh, les bon temps roule, eh? One of the first things that we did whenever we set foot on the property, I said, we have got to get trail cameras out. Or we're, we're running late getting in on this property. We really have no idea about it. We had standing beans on the farm. We put several cameras around there. We actually found some persimmon trees that later on in October started dropping. Persimmon. <laughs> Coming back in here to check one of the cameras, I set this camera up uh, probably a month ago. We found four of these persimmon trees right here along the edge of this field, and they were just draping to the ground, just loaded with little persimmons. And uh, I'm surprised they're still dropping. Um, I've checked this camera one time. One thing to remember, coyotes love persimmons. And the last time I checked it, it was nothing but coyotes. I mean, they're sitting under the tree, guarding the tree, waiting for the next persimmon to fall. Not only scouting out deer, we're scouting out coyotes for the upcoming trapping season, because when December rolls around, I'm going to knock them out. After an initial assessment of the property, uh, we realized the major limiting factor for us was going to be food. They're just, we didn't have any winter, fall and winter food sources on the, on the property. There's a little bit of tillable on the larger of the two farms. When you come onto a piece of property where the, the landowner is not necessarily wildlife oriented uh, and more toward the timber aspect, you're going to have a little bit of varying uh, ideas. So, you know, what we had to work with with our food plots this year is, is better than I really expected, um, but definitely not ideal situations. Uh, we were getting the food plots in extremely late. It was very, very dry, but we, we did end up getting some uh, good rains and the, and the food plots came up and looked really good. I really like to try to put as much food as I can on the property so when we're there hunting, say in that rut, middle of November time frame, we've got as many does on the property as we can because everybody knows that if you don't have any does on your property, the bucks are going to leave. Late October comes around and we started seeing some more mature deer pop up on trail can. We started getting a little bit excited about the potential. We have a deer show up. It's actually the first buck we actually got a picture of on the property. Um, my brother names him Lowball. Uh, he's a mature deer uh, for sure. Uh, I think he's four and a half years old, maybe five and a half years old. He's a mainframe nine pointer. I think he'll go in the mid 140s. Solid deer, nothing real special, but he is absolutely gorgeous. We've got another four year old. Um, this deer, very deceiving also, because in some trail cam pictures he looks three and some he looks four. Got some that makes him maybe look older. Uh, he's just a nice, solid eight pointer, really good long brow times, good long main beams, and good G2s and G3s. If that deer walks by, that's probably my favorite deer on the whole place, even though he doesn't score that well. 
Another buck we have we call the blurry buck because he only walks by one trail camera and it just happens to be the most unreliable camera we have on the property. I would say 90% of the pictures that we have of him are so blurry that you can't really tell what he is. One of them he looks like he's a 200 inch mule deer and he's just a big giant blur in the camera. But we did, we did finally end up getting a few pictures of him that's uh, fairly clear. We think he's a five and a half year old plus type deer and I think he'll break the Boone and Crockett. Um, definitely a deer that we want to shoot but we were only getting pictures of him on one camera so it's going to be really really hard to see that deer in the daylight. In the very first encounter that I had with a buck on the property I hung a stand on our north field. I can see 600 yards to my left and 400 yards to the right and all the pictures that we've been getting are where these deer are coming out into this bean field. I seen the tips of his antlers coming through and before he had jumped the fence, I'm like, eh, it's a two-year-old. Um, then he jumps the fence. Are my eyes deceiving me or is that a three-year-old deer or older? Because, you know, last year I had the worst season ever. I never shot, saw a mature deer. So it's been a while. And he comes out, he chases the doe around a little bit. And I'm like, you know what, let's just see. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do to start off with because I wasn't sure how old he was. I mean, he had a huge body, but his antlers were tiny. And that's a good teaching tool whenever you're trying to age a deer on the hoof, is you cannot look at their antlers to determine how old the deer is. After looking at the footage uh, two and three times, arguing with Chase about it, the deer in my mind is four and a half years old or older. And I think if we actually shot the deer, it would probably surprise you how old he is. Uh, he's deep in the chest, he's thick all the way through. Uh, no, he didn't have a lot of tarsal staining, but you know, that varies from deer to deer. Uh, his chin, he had the, the goozle underneath of his chin. His head was that big block deep, just four-year-old type deer or older. That's, that's all that I can, I'll, I'll, that's the only way I can explain it is he just looked like a mature deer in my mind. After watching the footage, I said, I think he could be three and a half. He might make four and a half, but to me, he, he didn't seem to show all of the signs of maturity that I would have expected to see. Uh, first week in November, we didn't see the tarsal staining, but you know, a deer like that might surprise you. He might be older than what I think he is, and we don't have any trail cam pics of him that I'm aware of, so you know, when we get back and really dig through the, the photos that we're getting here during the rut now, maybe he'll show up on some of those pictures and we'll get a little bit better chance to, to analyze, but right now they're saying I'm gonna underguess him at, at three and a half, maybe four and a half, and if that buck shows up in front of me, he gets a pass. Like I said, I probably wouldn't have shot him that time because I wasn't sure exactly what I was seeing. Um, but if he comes by again, I'm definitely going to shoot the deer because I want to see his jawbone. We all have a vision in our head. We dream about it 365 days out of the year of a four, five, six, year old deer coming in chasing a doe or just you know cruising by you put an arrow through him he runs 40 yards and expires that is the mecca of filming a tv show you have that mature deer come by and get it on video but i'm going to put you in a situation where you have to make a decision what would you do We just did something that I don't, I've never had to do in my life, and we didn't get 90% of it on film. <sighs> and I, I don't know what happened so quick. We fast forward to November 12th, my birthday. Um, it was the last day that my cameraman was supposed to be here. We roll out to the property. 
we pull up to the lake that's in the center of the property. It's kind of a, just a good central location for us to park. My cameraman says, look at that coyote on the dam. And I look over, sure enough, there's a coyote standing there and he kept looking out in the middle of the lake and he wouldn't leave, which is really odd for a coyote. And as soon as I throw it in the park and shut the truck off, we see this deer swimming around in circles out in the middle of the lake. You know, for, for me, producing this show, you know, we always try to get the best footage that we can. And, you know, when you run onto a situation like this, you would think that we'd have the whole thing on video, but we don't. Uh, it was probably the weirdest experience for me in the woods ever because I'm always worried about getting the video shot. And when we, we saw this deer, realized that he was struggling, and we had to act. Cameras thrown down, even if we'd have got it on video, I honestly wouldn't show it to you. We look out in the pond, and this buck is swimming around in circles out in this pond. This coyote had this, I don't know, he's probably 140, 150. I don't even know how old he is. But he had this deer pinned down out here in this freezing cold water. I mean, it's 25 degrees right now. I'm, I'm probably gonna get sick after this, but. We run the coyote off, and the deer got up on the shore. And I think there's something wrong with him. Either the coyotes had him down, or they've just been running him through this water for so long that he wasn't gonna make it. And we finally got him up on the bank, and I don't think he got it on film, but I come over here, the deer stood up, and you could tell that he was done. I mean, he, he, I, there, there's no telling how long he's been out here. So I shot him. It's not, it's not what you want to do, but we've got so many pictures of coyotes on this property that we're getting ready to start trapping it. We got our deer down, but it's not how I wanted to do it by far. I wasn't going to let the deer lay there and either die of hypothermia or be eaten alive by coyotes or drowned. You know, we love these animals. They're, they're, they're like family to us. We name them all, we, we think about them every day, and to let that deer stay there and let Mother Nature take its course is just not something I was gonna ha let happen. Now I shoot the deer and his instincts immediately kick in. He jumps back in the water like he had been doing when the coyotes were chasing him around, and he dies out in the middle of the lake and we gotta go get a boat to get this deer out. Alright, there he is. Ooh, that deer's a little bigger than I thought he was. Oh, man. That deer might go 160. I told you. Yeah, they've been getting on him. Yeah. Look Where's at all the scars right here. Coats. Coats have been pulled on him really hard. That's a big deer. What do you do? Man. You might want to stay tuned because the next time you see me, I'm going to be trapping coyotes. And I can guarantee you there's going to be at least one, if not two or three, bouncing right there on the end of that pond dam. a place I go tuck back in the pines where a green field grows my own little paradise I'm thankful for this land and the life that it provides see the measure of a man is what he leaves behind oh, oh, oh take what you need and pass
Sometimes you just gotta get on old Chuck. Let him loosen up a little bit. I am what I am. <laughs> if you sit me down, I'm gonna talk like this. <laughs> plantations, nothing can be better. That would have been good if he hadn't have just bulldozed the camera. <laughs> <laughs>